This video helps us understand the background needed for the mitosis and meiosis lab. The purpose of this lab is to apply knowledge about stages of mitosis and cytokinesis in cells. Along with that, you'll be able to identify and describe the stages of mitosis and cytokinesis in both plant and animal cells, and you'll be able to calculate the percentage of time during a day where a cell spends in each stage of its life cycle. Finally, you'll describe the chromosomes and what they're doing during different phases of the processes described in this. Now, this video is only the background. We won't get through all of this in this video. Let's take a moment and think about the bigger picture. This cross-sectional diagram of a piece of tissue shows a variety of cells that have a variety of functions. Each type of cell occupies a specific role in the life of the larger organism. Tissues like these are the background to the processes of cells growing and dividing. This context helps us see the need for understanding the details of cell division before we can understand larger things or look at a larger detail of a living organism. So as an overview, there is a cell cycle, which are the events occurring as a cell grows and divides. For prokaryotes, the bacteria, we simply call this binary fission, and it's a more simple process. It's much more complicated in eukaryotes. In eukaryotes, it includes mitosis, the division of the chromosomes in the nucleus of the cell. In this diagram, we can see that most of a cell's life is spent in interphase. It's this gray area that includes several other phases. During this part of a cell's life, it carries out the functions needed to live and grow. If it makes proteins, the cell makes proteins as part of its life. It includes the G1, which stands for the gap phase, and during that phase, the cell grows larger. During the S, or synthesis phase, the DNA of the cell is replicated in preparation of eventually splitting into two new daughter cells. And then the G2, or second gap phase, where the growth continues and the cell prepares to divide. Then later, we're going to look at the M phase, which is the mitosis phase in particular. So mitosis is the division of the nucleus. We can see, starting with inner phase, mitosis can be divided into several smaller phases that have characteristic structures and the genetic material is moving around in particular ways. So mitosis includes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. In mitosis, the genetic material is equally partitioned between the two new dividing cells. And after mitosis, a process called cytokinesis is the division of the rest of the cell, including other organelles and the cytoplasm. Let's continue to talk about mitosis here. Remember, the two new daughter cells that are made are genetically identical to the parent cells. We can see this in the diagram with the blue and purple chromosomes at the start of the process ends up and each of the new cells that form also have a blue and purple chromosome. Of course, you realize these diagrams are simplified and different species have a variety of numbers of chromosomes. For example, humans have 46 chromosomes in a typical cell. Remember the purpose of mitosis as part of cell division is that the cells can repair damage to the larger organism. So if you get a cut, you need to go through cell division and mitosis to make new cells to repair the cut and to grow as part of developing a living thing. Now in this diagram, we can see a slightly different set of stages. It still starts with interphase, but it divides prophase into prophase and prometaphase. That'll happen sometimes when you see different diagrams. But as you become familiar with the process of mitosis, you'll be able to navigate those new kinds of diagrams with some understanding. So prophase and prometaphase still go together. And then you have metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. They also lumped in cytokinesis here at the end. Like it says, we need to see the different structures involved. Now, 
In this diagram, the text might be a little small, but check in your textbook for a diagram that's similar, and you'll see the structures associated with the cell division, such as the nuclear envelope around the genetic material. You'll see centrosomes, the mitotic spindle, and at the end, a cleavage furrow forms between the two new cells. Then you'll also want to take note in diagrams like this of the formations that the genetic material is taking. For example, during interphase, it is drawn very loosely here because the DNA and the proteins that package it are being used and going through processes of protein synthesis and transcription and interacting with enzymes, and so the DNA is very loose there. Whereas, during mitosis, and cell division, the DNA condenses into chromosomes that have a much more clear shape. And you'll also notice that during metaphase, the chromosomes meet in the middle of the newly dividing cells, and during anaphase, they're pulled apart. So you need to know how to uh, recognize the different parts of mitosis using diagrams like this. Then we have meiosis. Meiosis is a special form of cell division needed to form haploid cells, or gametes, from diploid cells. We need to remember that haploid means that the cells contain a single copy of each chromosome, whereas with diploid cells, there are two copies of each chromosome. In meiosis, one DNA replication is followed by two sets of nuclear and cellular divisions. So it's slightly different from mitosis. It's a special form of cell division that's similar to mitosis. It only happens when we need to make gametes, which are uh, special cells needed for sexual reproduction. We can see here in meiosis versus mitosis in humans that mitosis goes from a diploid cell to two new diploid cells that are genetically identical. For humans, that's 46 chromosomes at the start, and two cells that have 46 chromosomes at the end. However, for meiosis, there's two rounds of cellular and nuclear division, so it goes from a typical human body cell with 46 chromosomes through two rounds of division to four cells at the end that are haploid. They only have one set of chromosomes. In humans, that means they have 23 chromosomes. You might see diagrams like this that go into much more detail. I know that text is too small to see, but what we can see is that it separates meiosis into two sections. Meiosis 1, the first division, and meiosis 2, the second division. It also includes the process of crossing over. Something that happens right at the beginning of meiosis, where there is an exchange of sections of homologous chromosomes, and that is a process unique to meiosis. Crossing over leads to a mixture of parental genes in the gametes, so that increases the genetic diversity that we get from sexual reproduction. By bothering to make gametes and combining those gametes and reproduction, we get a, a greater amount of biodiversity. Finally, here in this table, we can see some of the similarities and differences between mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis has the purpose of growth and repair. Meiosis is for making unique gametes. Through both of these processes, the chromosomes duplicate just once, but they lead to different results. For mitosis, we go from one diploid cell to two diploid cells, whereas in meiosis, we go from a diploid cell to four haploid cells. When mitosis occurs, the resulting cells are genetically identical, but because of crossing over, in the process of meiosis, the resulting cells are genetically different. Mitosis happens throughout the body, or somatic cells, as part of growing and repairing damage to the body, whereas meiosis only happens when we need gametes, which are the cells needed for sexual reproduction. So, this was the background needed to go through and learn about mitosis and meiosis to do the mitosis and meiosis lab. Um, check in your textbook for more details. I hope this helped. Thanks. Bye.